Hello everyone, this is your Trivia. Welcome back to Warhammer 3 as we're kicking off the pre-release preview period for the upcoming Champion of Chaos DLC and more importantly the Immortal Empires campaign that will be part of the free update in the company patch. And today in the first embargo period I'm allowed to showcase the Immortal Empires campaign only. Champion of Chaos materials will have to wait till next week. So let's start things off by taking a look at the new campaign selection menu. In the new update, we'll have the selection between the tutorial prelude, the Lost God campaign, the standard Realm of Chaos campaign, and the new Immortal Empires beta, which everyone will start off on in August 23rd, as they will take some time to properly merge the three games together. And speaking of beta, this is a pre-release build of said beta, so there are still things that are under wraps and getting worked on. So don't expect perfection. If we see text missing, it's completely normal. And clicking into this, we have our new Lord selection screen where we can change our race up here. For us, we decided through a community post poll on the channel earlier this week as we're going to go back to Grand Cathay and play the younger brother, the Iron Dragon Zhao Ming, as the main goal of this episode and this short series will be to showcase the new expanded Grand Cathay map on Immortal Empires. There's a lot of cool stuff added and we'll be going over some of the new provinces, the new special landmarks, as well as some hints at future DLC races as there are some nice easter egg drops in terms of who is located where in Grand Cathay on this Immortal Empires map. Now just a brief introduction of our lord and faction before we hop into things. We are focused on allying with the ogres. We want to have a safe route through the mountains for our caravans which will get 20% additional cargo capacity, 5 plus rank for our alchemist, minus 25% upkeep for all ogre mercenary units, and 15 points of extra armor for all melee units in our faction. So we are a melee focused faction, whereas our older sister is a range focused faction. Our lord himself will give his army a 100% magic item drop chance, so we'll be able to pick up items after every battle, and our melee units will be 25% cheaper for upkeep. We are a young lord, so 3 points of harmony there. No surprise. This is our starting location on this huge world map. It's a huge map. We'll see all of it without fog right after we hop in as I have a save file here that has the console commands and I turned off all the fog, gave myself every single piece of land in Grand Cathay just so I can check things out. As for lore, you can see a bit about the Lord himself, the faction, the race effects, and with all that said, we can check out the settings, which is very interesting because there's the new end game scenarios. First, the standard stuff, campaign difficulty, battle difficulty, we're going to be playing on the hardest level for both, legendary and very hard. Battle timers 40, realism's on, auto save, obviously with legendary, and as little advisor as possible. Now this is the juicy stuff. There are new sea lanes, which are these teleport path on the edge of the map. That basically gets us from Grand Cathay to Lustria. There are three of them. One that goes from here to over here. One that goes from over here to over here. And one that goes from over here to over here. Because it's a pain to spend time going through the lands of Ind and Kush. As there is basically a fast travel point over here. Uh, these are sea lanes. You hop army in. It takes two to three turns depending on your race. Some race are better at sailing than others to pop over to the other side. You basically disappear and reappear after the turn is up. It helps facilitate the map without making it a globe in this case. And that will be on. We'll have this all on default setting. There's a lot of cool things you can do with the endgame scenarios. This is sort of the new endgame challenge used in Immortal Empires. Essentially a few races depending on the scenario that triggers. As you can see the different scenarios down here, uh, basically maybe the vampire factions become super strong and get boosted and then they will send hordes at you and that's your endgame challenge. 
or it might be a wog uh, or it might be the tomb kings and basically you can change how difficult these end game scenarios will be how early you get a warning for them when they get triggered whether it's based on turn timer you can have this as early as turn 35 which sets the maximum turn to turn 35 and essentially i believe it can trigger on turn 10 even which is kind of scary but it's a fun little challenge you can do or it's basically triggered when you hit your long victory condition so there's multiple ways to trigger these scenarios you can adjust all of them uh, it's quite player friendly and you can even turn it off if you don't want to and just want to have fun on the map so with this being default setting, which is what I think is best to showcase sort of this new mechanic, let's hop into a new campaign here. Cafe must never stand still. Alrighty, um, there might be more of a flyover in the future. Can't really say. There are a lot of factions, and maybe this is enough. And this is going to be our new starting situation for Immortal Empires for Zhaoming. As you can see, the map has been updated and changed quite a bit as Hanyu Port is actually a port now, has a port building and the structure of the city has been changed where it now has a proper port. We're starting out in Qiang, in the wastelands of Jinshen, as we'll start off by fighting some rebel faction of Grand Cathay and then reuniting the wastelands of Jinshen by fighting off some Skavens who occupy these lands. We don't see very much here, which is not cool. We're going to switch over to another file that I have where we have fog turned off so we can see the glory of the entire map clearly. Alrighty, so this is still turn one. The only difference is I turned off fog of war and also gave myself every piece of Grand Cathay land so I can look at it. And the map is huge and beautiful as you see all the starting locations of every army. There's a couple things that are really new for everyone, including the Southern Wasteland, which we'll take a deeper look a bit later. But first, Grand Cathay. This part was in the original game. A lot of it have been changed, including what we mentioned with the Hanyu port. There's also this part, which were not in the original game, as we have a map expansion here including some very cool features. So let's hop over to the very south. We have the wonder who is lost here. But essentially we have this province here called the Serpent Estuary. It includes the Tower of Ashron and Daicheng. And these two land, well, more ports for Grand Cathay, starts out in this faction's hand, Norska faction, the Warmkins. Um, maybe a hint of some snake that will join this area in the future. Basically, I think there's a lot you can read into by what generic faction are here. Uh, given the area, uh, we might see some future factions uh, basically as placeholders for now. Then we also have this magical forest, obviously for the Wood Elves. Their armies are popped out because I forcefully gave them the land over. Um, Basically, there is a jungle of Jianqi in the middle of Grand Cathay, so the Wood Elf can teleport around. Uh, there's also another forest here, the Hunted Forest, right at the edge of uh, basically the Ogre territory coming out that also allow Wood Elves to teleport all around. Uh, we can take it for ourselves, even though I believe the climate is quite bad uh, for Grand Cathay. Then moving along, we have the Great Canal, sort of a callback to the actual Grand Canal in China uh, that connects the Yangtze with the Yellow River. This one connects a different area, but as you can see, it's actually pretty grand. And the two cities here are Bamboo Crossing, which is at the end of the canal, and Waidi Village. Now, the icons are a bit incorrect for this build. Not all the right icons are there, but we'll make sure to take a look at each of the building browser in case we miss any of the landmark buildings. The other standard buildings are still the same, but as you can see, more ports, which makes that irrelevant tech much more relevant now. 
Then we have the broken land of Tianli and the city of Fu Hong, which is going to be the future capital, I think, for Li Dao if he comes. Uh, basically, the southern dragon, the other brother, uh, fire dragon. And we have, obviously, a landmark building here, the Phoenix Temple. Right, so this will give a defensive bonus as the Dao is fighting with many of the factions in the south, protecting the southern border in a similar manner as the older sister in the north. We have campaign movement debuff on enemy armies, 20% in this province. Minus 2 corruption, leadership minus 20 for enemy armies when laying siege or encircling. Plus five melee defense went under siege for armies in the province. So sort of a local defensive bonus. Also a port city. Lots of port in Grand Cathay now. Then moving along, Temple of Elemental Wind, Village of the Tiger Men. These were actually here before. They basically just expanded down here. So a lot of the old provinces have different breakdown now as well. Wasteland of Jinshan we already talked about. I do not believe there are any... Yep, there's no landmark here. Then moving north to Shangyang, we do have the landmark. As you can see, it's missing the icon. We have the Grand Embassy. This is an old one. This generates income, alliance points, diplomatic relations, and a bit of income from Tariff. Then moving along, we go back to the Gunpowder Road, which also missing an icon as they have the Ninth Wall, which is a defensive building for all armies for some nice defensive uh, stats. Melee defense plus six when defending, 30% extra ammo during siege defense battles, and also armies in the region plus 10 melee defense when under siege, attrition minus 40% when under siege, more supplies and control for the local province. Then moving along, we have, where is it? Wengchan, which has the Jade Blooded Sorcerer building, which obviously provides more magic growth, which is really lovely, some control, and local replenishment rate. Then another thing to celebrate, our capital is finally 10 slot. This has been fixed, racial capitals, having the extra two slots compared to a standard capital. Basically, the game had Weijing as an eight-slot city with three unique landmarks, which just it's not on, it's just not fair. You just can't build things. So now it's back to ten, and we have our Paradise Garden. Nothing's really changed on these. These have the same bonus as they had before: Temple of the Two Moons and Celestial Court. And if we move down, Celestial Lake. Okay, so we start getting to some interesting area. You can see all the corruption over here, but before we get there, I don't think there's any... Yeah, nothing unique here. They did redo the layout. I believe Celestial Lake before had more prob like more counties, but I might be mistaken on that. But let's talk about Nongchang, which is a new area here. The corruption is from Vampire Counts. And it's not just any vampire counts. If you zoom into the logo, they're called Jiangshi Rebels. Jiangshi being the Chinese word for zombies. The ones that you see in the old 80s, 90s movies that jumps with the Qing Dynasty uniforms. And you can see the little Taoist scroll being slapped on its head to freeze it in place. And this is probably a hint at maybe some, you know, the Empire Count faction with the Jade Blood of Empires in Grand Cathay in the future would make a lot of sense. Would be very interesting to see some Asian flavor of empires to be added in. So pretty excited for that. And then the other stuff is pretty standard. We have Celestial Riverland, which we had before, but I think they did some new subdivisions and also the layout got changed so that we have two ports now. As you can see, they widened the river over here to give more places port access essentially and then if we head down there it is Mount Li and there is a Li temple that has the same name Li, uh, Li. it's Li not Li Li temple which has uh, income generation control faction wide 
adjacent corruption reduction as well as local corruption reduction, which is quite nice. Uh, Lee is the word for uh, rights, basically. Uh, basically, uh, like rights of Zhou, R-I-T-E. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we have a lot of coastal towns as well. And the factions here, there is the Eastern River Lords, which I suspect might be Yingying's future faction if she ever joins the game. Uh, Fu Chao will be kind of her main city. Lots of ports here. And we have, uh, it's supposed to be Beiqi, but the English localization's Bei Chai for some reason. I don't think there is a unique building here though. There's no new landmark. They just all get ports, which is pretty nice. Ports make quite a bit of money. And of course, if you go above here, we have who we almost played as, Mr. Felhart here. Uh, he controls the entire plains of Xian, actually. He raided both, uh, just took them back. And that's his starting location with his little black arc here right next to basically our capital, very close. I think there is one last landmark building that I'm missing. So there's the one in Fuhuang, the temple, the temple in the... Hmm. Maybe I'm not missing one. Are there only two new ones? I think there are three. Which one did I miss? I don't think they have one. Oh, never mind. This is the one that I miss. Standing stones. Plus 20 growth, plus 10% research rate, plus 4 melee attack when fighting against warriors of chaos, demons of chaos, undead, and green skin faction wide. Not a bad bonus. So take down the Jiangshi, and then you get to add that in. Just to make sure we didn't miss any, we're gonna just fly through these. The bastions are still the same. They did change the layout in the north, but um, it's not a major change. And they basically gave a Grand Cathay faction control of those land. That's the temple, which we did look at. Yeah, I think we covered everything. And then there's the temple here. And there's nothing here, just ports. That's right. Same thing here. And we're back to the beginning. Good. Yeah, in the north, it's not a big change. As you can see, basically you have Grand Cathay factions controlling the gates as well as some territories to the north. But Going beyond, we have basically War of Chaos and North Coast factions, and obviously, I don't know, I can show them on the campaign, it's fine. Of course. Village just starts over here. Uh, I think he's going to be annoying. But anyhow, uh, this is basically the map for Grand Cafe in this new Immortal Empires expansion. Now we can focus on some of the other parts of the map. So here are the sea lanes. As you hover over them, you can see how many turns it will take you to travel on them. I think the time is going to be different depending on which sea lane we're using, or is it all two turns? I guess for our race, it's all two turns. Yep. And then this one hops over here, which brings us to the southern wasteland. There are still these nice little shipwrecks and other interesting curiosities in the water. You can basically go fight. So, Southern Wasteland, we have pretty much every representation of the Chaos Gods down here in different regions. Very nice design on the map. Nurgle. Zinch. And then Corn. And then guess who we have over here? Uh, Mr. Chaos Assassin himself. Right, he's at the end here with the Godless Crater. 
And that's the Southern Chaos. And this is where one of those sea lanes pop out in the south side of Lustria. And then there's another one in the middle here. And we're not going to go over the old map. There might be minor changes, but, you know, I'm sure you all are more familiar with it than me, given the amount of time I have in Mortal Empires compared to most of you. Uh, but it's huge. This map is really big. All right, now that we showcase most of the new stuff, we're gonna hop back over to the campaign and just play the game as normal. Alrighty, so let's kick off our official campaign and we'll start with diplomacy. Actually, no, we want to be in balance first for harmony. That's the most important step for any Grand Cathay faction. And we'll do that by kicking out our hero here. I don't think they can actually do much for us on this turn before we kick them out. Can't really assassinate any heroes. Yep, so off they go. They provide one point of Inyang value. Each Lord provides three. So we want to balance our Yang Lord with the In Lord. And the cheapest one would be a Lord Magistrate. So here we go. Let's just put them in. And we're balanced. All the bonuses are active. Some very useful ones for diplomacy as well. Uh, in terms of technology, I think we're just going to go down this neutral line. We are a melee focused faction, so 10 extra armor for the Peasant Law Spearman is just fine. Uh, they didn't change anything to the technology structure, it's still the same exact tree. Uh, 23 tech in each of this section, so 69 tech because it looks like the Inyang symbol, 69. And the top half are young tech. Most of them are one point, there are four that are three point young. And they're always mirrored on the other side with an in-harmony balance. So it's very wise to research, say, drill training to one turn and then swap. That way you can finish both within two turns. That way you don't mess up your harmony for too long if you don't watch out or pair it with buildings and agents. The most useful ways to do it with agents, and that also means for buildings, which we'll take a look at now, we want to have a pair of openings for the infrastructure since we have basically the same civic building but a young variant and an invariant giving growth. We have the same for industry which gives the base income and then conscription which gives control and some military bonuses. Usually I just stay away from control. They're a bit expensive and don't really justify building them early on or at all in most cases, especially if we're staying inside Grand Cathay where the climates are favorable, so control is not an issue. Usually you just want one industry and one civic, and the pair is essentially the young building here early with the in building here. Reason being the young civic gives construction cost discount, so during the build-up phase of the entire province, this will bring you a lot of discounts. And then likewise, the early versions of in has more income than the young variant, 150 versus 100. And they tie here in the second tier, but you get the extra 4% from trade tariff. It balances back at the final tier. So essentially late game, you would convert your in building into the young building, you can convert them directly. And then likewise convert your young civic building as you have finished up building all your buildings inside your province and you would trade that to the in variety which gives income from all buildings which maximizes the high base income that you have and make up for the lost trade tariff so that's pretty much the philosophy behind the balance of the buildings uh, back to diplomacy let's see what we can do we want these trade deals early and they didn't fix this i really wish it just goes to zero every time I am just personally a little bit OCD about this part, and yeah. I'm not gonna go for like every single coin, and sometimes if it's point one, we'll let it go. But it'd be so much easier if they just do it, you know, automatically. I think we can actually get these deals done just by joining their war against the rebels. Oh, that's zero. That's good. And we can do the same for... Are, oh, they're fighting the Jiangshu rebels, and we have to pay them a little bit. Can we get a discount? Maybe just a little discount. Oh, come on. 
This is probably going to be Lidal's faction in the future. The burning winds for the fire dragon. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get any of these deals until later. And we'll pay attention to confederation chances. You never know who becomes weaker when they get attacked. Who did a move? We did a move. Let's do all the other stuff first. Caravan, our starting caravan looks like an Ogre Alliance one. Which are usually pretty nice. We can just keep them for this 5% allegiance point. Which means I should probably recruit a new one. Cost us a bit of money, but that's not bad. Increase experience gain. Let's recruit him. Give him 1,200 since we have that 20% bonus. And I'm going to send him as far away as possible. So 10 turns, I think, is the longest time. Outdoor versus... I think Marienburg has the income item, from my memory, from the Maoyin campaign. So we'll go there. Basically, we haven't really met anyone. They shouldn't really attack us. As for our compass, this becomes interesting. So... There's two possibilities. Celestial Lake, which gives us the growth that will increase to 15 points, which is quite nice. Extra income and extra winds of magic. All very useful. Or we can go Great Bastion. Replenishment all the way up to 10%. And we also get 10% discount for recruitment since we want to build up our first army. And then we also get this. But the problem with this is... It says in Cathay, but how this actually works is it's given to all Cathay factions when fighting inside Grand Cathay and also fighting on their own land. Which means if I'm attacking into a Skaven controlled county, this would not be given to me, even though I'm still in Grand Cathay because I don't control the land. So it's not quote unquote in Cathay, which I feel it's weird. It should just be anywhere within the boundaries of Grand Cathay. And also, there are rebel lord factions right now, right? The rebels of Jinshen, the rebels of Nanyang. They are also Cathay factions who are defending their own Cathay land in Cathay. So when I fight them, this compass is for the entire race. They will get this ability against me. And this thing hurts. So, because of that reason, until we tame all the rebels, I think we're going with Celestial Lake and just going to boost that growth. And that might be all we need to do. Oh, fight. Right. Fight. Showcase. Let's speed that up a little. Even though it says low, I really don't want to take casualties this early. There's some tough fights with the Skavens early on, so we'll actually fight this on the field. They also happen to have a great Loma Rider, which is a bit tricky to deal with. We have one as well. We probably sacrifice some of our own health to take that guy down. Our peasant archer isn't really going to scratch that thing. Too much armor. Alright, terrain's pretty fair. I think this little hill is nice. We can back all the way up. They have range, so we'll put the shield guys in the front. We'll be up here harassing. I think that's our job. I start out with Plague of Rust, Dragon's Breath, okay. It's a base damage spell, doesn't do that much damage. We want to get them into our range first. They're going to be in this forest for a little bit. They're also not going to be able to do too much damage to me. The peasant archer, I mean. Once we're a dragon, we have, what, 100 armor? So, expected. 
Damage blocks, what, 75%? Ooh, that is maybe a little wasteful. Can we shut you down here? Hit here. Even though we're hitting into the tree, I know they're there. Hi, right, guys. Let me strip your armor. And then attack you. I think we're killing things. Maybe since we know they're there, we'll, we'll do it there. Now, I really wish there was a lighting the forest on fire mechanic, just like in Three Kingdoms. Okay, we did okay. They're definitely blocking a lot of it with just the forest. We're gonna halt this for a little bit. Finish this fight. Send these at the range units. We only lost one unit, technically. We took a lot of damage, though. Probably gonna end up losing more. We'll see how we do here. No, it looks like we're gonna be fine here. Chase. Any chance we might accidentally, yeah, friendly fire this in the sky? Oh yeah, we actually did hit them. Well, it's not friendly fire, but if we kept flying with them, we would have been victim of friendly fire. Don't they have another range unit? Alright, we'll stay in the air and kill this. I have 8 ammo, plenty to go. There's no room for the cavalry to do anything, so I'm not worried. It should be timing out soon. I'm gonna fly back, let them just chase. Alright, charge, do it. They might kill like two of us, but we're gonna wipe them out. Is that a gap that they're going for? Wow. Too bad they get caught in combat. They killed one of us. Alright, so they timed out. We'll try to ex Oh, can I- let me become smaller. So I don't get hit by the... Friendly fire. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we want to come back. Well, I actually did, uh, I mean, they were low. Mm, they actually did some damage there. Like, scratched us, but didn't actually kill any entity, so it's free damage back. Fire this one. Got four shots left. All right, army loss kicked in. Awesome. Are we don't need to do much to him. We took some damage, but not too much. Three. Two on the Loma from the Loma trade fight, which we couldn't really prevent. And then we lost one peasant long spearman on that cavalry charge, which he didn't get credit for. Huh. Collision damage not counted in the damage modification here. These three are from the summon unit, so they don't actually count here. Alright, we do get items quite easily due to our Lord's bonus. Um, do we need that money? I think I'd rather be very healthy here, but... We didn't lose a lot. I think we'll actually heal that naturally. We're going to stay on our own side for the turn to recruit a couple more units before we fight that. Pretty useless item. We're probably going to just fuse that when we get a chance. Now, our skill tree, the second rule here is where all the special ones are. Unlocks at rank 9. 
which means after rank 5, we'll stop taking points. And once we hit 9, we'll pick up this one for the unlock. This one's not that strong, but it does make Plague pretty cheap and all Lord of Metal spells shorter cooldown. More importantly, I want Lord of Shangyang for increased diplomacy, cheaper ogre units, and we want to reduce the construction cost for all buildings wherever we stand. Finally get our alchemist back with plus 2 rank, plus the 5 for the faction, plus 7 rank up for alchemist. And most importantly, we want regeneration on um, Mr. Zhaoming himself. Even though we will have the weakness to fire, but that's fine. The passive regen is going to be massive for us since we're not melling with her healing spells. These are very nice as well. They're very melee focused. And we also can give nearby units some damage resistance. But I think the first one's always going to be just Route Marcher. Can't really deny that 5%. I think we just settle for the regular units since we can't actually recruit this, nor do we really want to. It's a little pricey and we are demolishing the building. I think that's pretty much all we need to do. I don't think there's going to be any changes to diplomacy after that fight. If anything, we'll be a little bit lower in terms of military power. And we're going to go after Han Report, which probably would force us to fight since I doubt we can garrison, we can delegate against that garrison. With the Fire Ring though, I think we'll have no problem blasting the gates. We'll be in dragon form to kill the towers. Alright, before we do that, any changes? Hmm, I don't know where they are. But I know they're not the clan here in Xingwu. So I might just sign it for you money. Us, yes, yes. Want something only we provide? Cash. You, oh, he's willing to give us more. Okay, not that much more. Good contract. We can always break it later. The dragon. It is my sacred duty to welcome you. The I think that's all we can get out of it. Ready to Our sister will come around later. Darkness. All right, let's go to war. Wait, how do we? Yeah, we healed back passively, so picking up money was good. Skaven up there. Right. There's no. Lord or hero here, so that's pretty easy. We'll pretty much try to booze our fire ring from the outside and then have to rush into a street fight. Dragon form to kill the towers and then try to take the points, force an army loss, and that's probably the best we can do. The tricky part is going to be that fight against the Skavens, because I know they're starting armies 12 units, and if they started a second army, that probably means their starting army is about to get full. Now we don't want to attack on this side, way too many towers on the wall. I think the front gate actually has no towers. Yeah, funny enough, the front gate has no towers. Only two gates. This is like the... <laughs> My general gripe with siege or city design for Total War games is, historically speaking, if you're designing a city, you want as few gates as you can, right? It's for convenience sake, but it's also the weakest point in the defense. In Total War games, like, let's just slap two gates right next to each other. Makes zero sense why you would need that. But we have that. Alright, we probably don't want to fire well. Let's see how they defend this. Are they on the wall? They are on the wall. Let's kill the wall. Three shots to kill it. That's a little disappointing. But we do get to drop some Jade Warriors. Fall to their death.
Yeah, so close. Maybe we aim for this one. Just let the splash kill this. Save us some ammo. Hold on. When we get that first volley, we can switch. There we go. And then we don't waste anything. This unit will be completely wiped. Perfect. Yep, they're gone. Now, these two range units. Can we get a shot in here? Think it's too late? Alright, stop, stop. It's too late. Oh, they moved back! Oh, I should've just gone with it. Now it's too late again. Any chance we can squeeze a shot in here? Oh, we can! That's a good chunk. This is as big of a hole as we can get for the shots, I think. We can't really move the siege weapon into the city, it's just really not feasible. Yeah. I don't know how much more we can do here. Before just charging in. Oh, he should be doing other things right now. That's what we should be doing. There's towers that has definitely gone up. There's one right there. Go kill it. I can't destroy these. I can pop open the gate, but I don't think I can kill the units. It doesn't collapse. There's another tower there. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna have to start shifting things up. Sent by dragons, move as wind. Oh, they moved the guys down. Let's open it. Might as well at this point. One of you fire. There we go. So where to kill the unit? Oh, oh, we killed it. It does collapse. They, f they do fall down even though it doesn't animate like that. Oh, this might be the gap we're looking for. They're busy firing at our dragon lord. Got four more shots. Let's try to get as much value as we can from it. Wait, they can hit us? What kind of range is that? Alright, it's time to move. I think we'll run dry before they make it. So the friendly fire situation. Oh, they actually destroyed one. Mm, I mean, we'll be sitting here for a while afterward. I think they did well. Let's just drop the machine so there's no friendly fire. Come out. Everyone move up. Start flying in. See if we can hunt down some of these uh, routed guys. On the wall? Hmm, sure. Only 40 something. Don't have to worry about it. This is pretty accessible. Looks like they just built the monument. We'll be flying in first. Are they going to come down? That's suicide. Alright, we'll kill that group. They'll take on them. They'll take on them. Get outside. Get outside. Alright, we destroy that. Now we're going to look for flanking opportunities. I think they killed off that range unit, which takes away their harmony bonus. There's another one there. So we can loop around and flank them. Soften that up. Alright, 
Looks like they're far enough that I can maybe fit them in here. I'll go directly from the front on them. Alright, these two go for the capture. Alright, now that we have them trapped, gonna work on the flank attack. But I don't want them to get attacked, so I'm gonna put them actually in between these groups. Alright. I'm gonna give them our flank. It's fine. We wanna flank them. So just go, go. You just go here and capture so they don't rebuild that. We kill this together. Street fighting, shooting. Alright, everyone's inside. It's gonna be hard to get a flank, but let's see if we can get a flank there. We'll block this. Basically trade them with the spear. We'll go for the capture. Fire, fire, fire. Okay, and then just provide a young bonus for the most part. Someone's gonna have to block them once they expire. We're coming back, because they're going to need our help. I think once we beat this group, it's probably army loss. Capture that real quick. They broke, and they're fighting them. Move the archer up, just to provide that bonus. And then we'll just pile in here. Come back, come back, come here, come here. Psycho charge that. Wait, are they peeling? Because I gave a charge command? Ah, uh, that tower's back. Am I stuck? Alright, can I transform back and get unstuck here? I'm stuck, actually. Are they facing me? No, they're not. Not braced in the right direction. Charge. Oh, that tower hurts. Oh, the mass difference. Alright, that's great. Alright, now that they have captured it. See if we can get it. I should go this way, go this way, get a flank. Can you move now? Ah, uh, he can move now. Yeah! not good. Can I, can I get back anytime soon? Are we literally walking inside buildings? I guess we are. I will be back. They might not need us when, when we are back, but we will be back. Charge! We're almost there. All right, come back. Because I want to cast a spell. Oh, no, 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 you, you, you don't move. You guys, a couple of them are trapped. Mm, no need to reduce their armor. Just want to scratch that little group of enemy and not our friendly units. Man, they're blocking us so well. Uh, army loss by the time we got here. Alright, we'll take it.
Yeah, took some casualties. It's a siege battle. What do you expect? It's all on this guy mostly, so I'll take that. The bug of getting stuck was kind of weird. That took us out of the fight to maybe cast some good spells behind their back. But nothing two turns wouldn't heal back. We're probably going to be here two turns to recruit before we can challenge the Skavens, since I know they have a big army. Oh, right. Artworks back. I mean, technically new for Cathay, because they never had artworks before. Forbidden Rod. Two arcane items of different quality. Means we can't fuse them. Ranked up a bit more. So I think what we will do is melee attack first and then armor. Power. Such power. We'll get our pair off here. We'll have enough to upgrade this next turn and also upgrade them again. Should have enough money. Recruitment wise, we're going to do a mix of local and global. And then basically this again. So we'll be at 18, not exactly full. We might just step to the edge, get it to 20 after two turns and then fight them. We'll probably fight the one outside to grab the one inside along with it. That's probably the best way to do it. Might not have enough money next turn. That's the clan, right? We see them. I'm not going to sign anything with them because obviously we're going to declare war with them. Hopefully we'll get something. Because I don't think we have enough money to upgrade both the settlement and the buildings next turn. The turn timers, I think, are pretty fast. Optimal for like, you know, 275 factions on the map in the beginning. So this will be 1,500. Yeah, we don't have enough. Now we can definitely just upgrade one. Um, it doesn't change the Inyon value. It's basically one for the whole chain. So once we have this set up, we're fine. And then whenever we have money, we'll get that because it's not like we're leveling this to three anytime soon. Unless we can get some cash. Not from them. Child of the nine. You I mean, the can you throw anything else in here? Are you willing? Are you like happy to fight with me? <laughs> Wishful thinking. Trade settlements. Oh, we should check this too. Sometimes they have like really weird valuations for settlements. If it's like in danger, it could be free essentially. Mm. Celestial ancestors. Not much we can get from them here. So that is that. We we could delete the two in the back here that are local. But yeah, I'd rather get the army ready than get the building out this turn. It's not a big deal. Alrighty, time to move up. That army... Oh, we see them. They have a third army. Is that so? Okay. We're gonna attack the one outside and see if we can drag them out. Yeah, we can build this now, no problem. Anything different here? Well, they still want a nice little peace deal, but they're gonna get a very different deal from me. Uh, where's the war decoration? There it is. Hello, guys. Where are you again? Right here. Fire and metal. He's gonna run. Is, is he still in reinforcement range? I don't 
don't think I can get that. Ooh. Right, full stack. It's a settlement. Surprise, surprise. Four armies. Hmm. There's not a lot of space. Now, obviously, their unit quality are just terrible. Skaven slaves, like through and through. Clan rats. This is from the garrison, which is why the quality is a little better. He started pulling with the Night Runner. Everything else are just Skaven slaves. Three lords. Well, we're going to end the episode here. I think we will fight this battle. It'll be kind of grand to fight four armies. We'll get a ton of experience because the new calculation for experience in Warhammer 3 is based on how many enemies, uh, like enemy armies you're fighting. So like just having this guy show up as one army, it's giving us a ton of extra bonus experience on top. So we'll try to level up Jamming closer to that rank nine and we'll just tough this battle out and we'll have plenty of time to recover afterwards. Even though I think the rebel lords of um, Jinshen will come down and fight us from Shangyang. So we'll come back next time, continue from here. Hope you guys enjoy this one and see you all then. Bye.